Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well, and welcome to a bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogmad Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost you a cent. Click the like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment and share the video. Why? Well, because these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. They are 100% appreciated and they do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into today's bonus, shall we? All right, folks, for the bonus, I'm going to share with you some just terrifying experiences and also some very interesting video evidence that these creatures are out there. One of the videos that I'm going to share with you has just baffled me forever. Uh, it's seldom talked about, but it should be talked about and researched a hell of a lot more than it is. Let's get into it. Today's first dog man encounter is a subscriber encounter. It brings us to Clark County, Alabama. I'm 36 now. At the time of my sighting, I was 12 or 14. My dad had the sighting with me. He has since passed away, and I live in his and my old childhood home now, where the sighting occurred. So it was late one night, around 2 in the morning, I happened to be staying with my dad that night. We were both awoken by what sounded like an infant newborn screaming at the top of its lungs. Only sound we heard also literally vibrated our insides. It was so loud it should have hurt our ears, but somehow it didn't. We could tell the sound was coming from the shed behind our house, where he had parked a tractor in one of his trucks. We stood at the back door, scared as fuck, whispering to each other what we thought it could be. The sound never stopped, mind you. It had to have been about five minutes at the point since we first awoke. We turned the floodlight on that was in the back of the house. The noise keeps going. We finally work up the nerve to step out onto the back deck. And we both had 12 gauge shotguns with double out buckshot aimed towards the shed. As soon as we stepped out, the noise stops. About 10 seconds after we stepped out, something absolutely massive and pitch black in color bounds from the shed into the woods in about three or four leaps. Now the wood is at least 45 to 50 yards from the shed. It was so fast it seemed unnatural. Also, we made out that the front stood higher than the rear. It stayed on all fours the whole time we had seen it. It did have a medium-length tail. We didn't see its eyes. It moved so fast it was unreal and didn't make out much. We live in the woods and it was dark even with the floodlight in Clark County, Alabama. I can tell you this, it was no black bear. I've seen them. This thing was massive. It was no panther. Again, way too big. Also, I don't know if Bigfoot can run on all fours, so I'm thinking dog man. I also hear massive, deep howlings in the woods. It's no coyote. I've been around them my whole life and know what they sound like. I still hear the howling to this day at night. Deep in the woods, it sounds massive. I also hear weird ape canine sounds in the woods. Also, paranormal things have happened around here. Anyway, that is the one and only time I did see the creature. I hear it several times a year, though. I also found some large canine tracks, and I'm going to send the pictures to you next time I find any. Me and my dad, before we stood there, 
We were trying to think of what it sounded like, and so many things went through our minds. We stood there whispering to each other, thinking what it was. This god-awful sound, it should have been deafening, but it wasn't. Like I said, it literally vibrated our insides. So weird and hard to explain. It didn't hurt, though, and it should have. It actually felt kind of relaxing in a weird way. The vibration, but God, it was a scary sound. The best thing we could think before stepping back onto the deck was, I said, Dad, it's got to be some drug addict or maybe a lady left their baby in that they didn't want and had left it under our shed with a large electronic microphone by the newborn's mouth as it screamed and wailed for dear life. That's the closest thing I could think of that it sounded like my dad agreed. We both knew it wasn't a newborn human baby, though. I forgot to say all I saw of its head was it was huge and it looked round. But I saw it from the side and back and it happened so fast before it bounded towards the wood line. Thanks for your time, Jeff. Today's second dogman encounter brings us to Massachusetts. I had a dogman encounter on November 15th, 2015 in October. Mountain State Forest near Lee, Massachusetts. I've been an avid outdoorsman, bushcrafter, hunter, survivalist for over three decades. I've hunted all over North America, Alaska, and Anticosti Island. I've come across every predator, cougar, black bear, brown bear, wolves, coyotes. What I saw that Sunday morning was no bear. It was no more than 75 feet from me and I was on the tail end of a five-day camping solo. I had made my camp on top of a ridge about 250 feet from a river below me. It was at dawn and I had made my way down to the river to retrieve some water to make some coffee. The river flows hard and makes it quite a bit of noise due to the outcrops of rocks in the middle of it. As I got closer to the water, I noticed what appeared to be a bear bent over at the water's edge. Now the last thing you want to do is spook a bear. I carry a whistle around my neck, which I blow periodically as I'm hiking for that specific reason, to alert bears that I'm coming through. So I blew the whistle. As soon as I blew the whistle, the creature's head spun around. Again, I still thought it was a bear. But its head turned, its shoulders started to turn with it. It was then instantly I knew it was not a bear. It had a canine head. It methodically got up, in no rush. It just got up to its hind legs, then turned completely around. I was in the 1st Battle of Fallujah, May of 2004, 2nd Battalion, 1st Marines, and I was afraid. Scared every time I went live. But adrenaline took over and I could deal with my fear. But the fear I felt that day was nothing I had ever experienced. I was frozen in fear and couldn't move. I had a 45 caliber sidearm on me and have drawn it gone a thousand times at the range. I couldn't get myself to reach for it. I was petrified. It seemed like a lifetime. It was standing there looking at me, but it was maybe less than a minute. It broke right, got down onto all fours and went into the bush. I stood there maybe for an hour motionless until I got the courage to move. Today's third dog man encounter is a subscriber encounter and it brings us to the Philippines. Hey Jeff, greetings. I'm one of your subscribers all the way from the Philippines. I've been a fan of cryptids or have been listening to a lot of stories from all around the world. I also manage to connect similarities with the stories with our local cryptids, but enough of that. This encounter is not mine, but my dad's. This happened over three years ago and it's happened twice in the same month. Well, to give a description of our area, we do live in a place between urban and rural community, situated across a river and lots of man-made fish pens, and there is some woods. I don't know how to explain this in great detail since English is not really my first language. The encounter happened to my dad while he was driving down this road to go home. It was late, maybe 11 at night. It was not necessarily pitch black, but he was the only car on the road. He happened to see this thing he described like a dog-like in appearance, but is three or four times the size. It looked like a wolf, he mentioned, and emphasized on that. There have been no wolves native to our country or area. He said it was grayish-white in color. 
He wasn't driving fast in this instance since he was nearing our home. With this, he wanted to run it over with his car, but said it was too big to be normal and was afraid that it might wreck his car instead, so he slowly followed the creature until it reached a crossing and left towards the river and disappeared out of sight. I asked him why he fouled this thing, or was he not afraid? He said jokingly, If I had managed to catch this thing, it could have been worth a small fortune. But I know he was joking around. My dad is not one to be scared of this kind of stuff since he doesn't believe in the supernatural. Even after he encountered this thing twice on the same road he is taking and I am taking every night after work, going out at night. I was not able to share this with any others since I think I purposely tried to block it out and just forgot about it. It is since I'm using the same path leading to our home every night and I always come home late and I do not have the luxury to be in a car when I pass this area. I only have a motorcycle and judging from the size of the creature as my dad mentioned, it could have easily run me down if I came across it. That may be the reason I forgot about it, what my dad had told me. I don't know what it may be, a dog man, an extremely large dog, a skinwalker. Whatever it is, I don't want to run into it. For reference, if my dad says it's big, it would be big. We had three male German Shepherds and one mixed Husky, so if he means it's three or four times larger, he means it's comparing to our dogs. I don't know if Dogman exists in our area or if it's something entirely different. Maybe it's just an animal, but it scares me now when I remember that story. I just wanted to share this as a heads up to anybody listening in our part of the world where this type of creature does not normally exist. I hope they don't. I will try to ask my dad soon to describe the creature so maybe I can find out what it was, but I'm afraid to ask for more details about it since this is the road I use on a daily basis and I don't want to be scared while I'm going home. Today's fourth and final encounter is a very strange encounter that I stumbled across and I'd love to share it with you guys to get what you guys think of it. My husband comes from a long line of outdoorsmen, hunter, fishermen, etc. He spends every weekend out exploring the land and also grew up in a dense forest. He's a proud skeptic and actual earth scientist as a professional. He does not believe in anything unless there's evidence to back it up. He says he's grown up in the woods for over four decades and if any of these things exist, he would have seen something by now. He told me an experience he had forgotten about last night while he was out in the National Forest an hour north of us. He saw a strange group of three deer. The deer had long, bony, skinny bodies with weird elongated legs and wolf tails. He said the tail part was so bizarre, strangely long and almost as long as their whole body, bushy, just like an extra long German shepherd tail. He said the deer bodies didn't look right, really gangly and disproportionated. He couldn't put his finger on what was so strange about them. The tail is what stood out most. We then together googled deer species in the area and nothing matched the description. There are some deer with longer tails, but they don't exist in our area and their tails are not bushy and long like a dog's tail. They're trim and stubby, like a regular deer tail just elongated. Basically, no such creature exists in our area or anywhere else. He said that he saw them once and then sometime later saw them again. They were not moving, just watching him. Nothing else was out of the ordinary, and nothing else happened that day. The first thought in my mind was shapeshifter, skinwalker, dogman. There's many accounts of weird half-deer creatures associated with shapeshifters or dogmen. The thing is, is he has had paranormal encounters, but refuses to accept it was something out of the ordinary. He was in the middle of nowhere at night when a giant, totally black craft flew straight over him, covering the sky, making a weird low pulsating sound, like a pulsating electric hum. He thinks it was simply an experimental aircraft and didn't think anything of it. Another time, he was driving on an isolated country road at night. He and his passengers saw a very bright orange orb in the sky moving around. 
Suddenly, a cow appeared in the middle of the road out of nowhere, and they almost hit it. Once again, he assumes it was a planet he saw, and the cow had quickly ran into the road when they weren't looking. Another time, he saw a pair of yellow-green glowing eyes watching him from the darkness, pretty high up, seven feet-ish, accompanied by someone whistling what he said was an eerie tune. This encounter is the only weird one he will admit to, as he felt uneasy and ran back to find his car. This took place by a pond or body of water. Regarding the strange wolf deer, does that sound familiar to anyone? Alright, so those were the experiences on two. He's very interesting and just the first one is mind-blowing videos. Let's get into it. Okay, the first video clip that I want to share with you is it's the end of a 30 second video clip that a guy on TikTok, his name is Throat Sing King, and he goes, he sings with his throat. He's not a paranormal channel. He's not a cryptid channel. He's nothing to do with any of this. He actually um, denounced this video. He doesn't want people checking out his chant or his TikTok because of this video. Um, because he is just dedicated to his skill. He's out in the woods, and I'm not going to share the entire video. If you want to see it, go to Throat Sing King. Uh, it's a 30-second clip, and you can see something moving in the back. Actually, I will share the entire thing um, and the very end. You can see something moving in the back. I'm going to take the... the uh, sound out of the clip though don't want to get hit with a copyright strike so you can see this creature moving in the back he's in the woods he's doing this throat singing there's a deer that comes up on him as he's he's doing this throat singing which is a it almost sounds like a didgeridoo now you see this thing walking in the distance and it goes into the woods and then the deer is there the deer is not looking at him anymore it's now looking at these things and then turns back and looks at him because from the right and left hand side out comes from the woods these creatures that he didn't know that were there until he got home and and edited this video clip um it is amazing it's terrifying and i'm thinking that maybe with his um throat singing it's a it's a vibration it really does sound like a didgeridoo uh i think maybe he kind of attracted them to come in towards him while he was doing it uh once again throat sing king the video is on his tiktok uh so you guys can hear the um his throat singing but it is really a terrifying experience or an and encounter for him um well it, he didn't know about it but it's a terrifying video so check it out
Now, I can see two figures, one going across the screen, and then two coming out of the woods. The one that is, I guess, would be on the right-hand side, The that's freaky. I mean, and he doesn't, he's not aware of these things. And I really honestly feel that he attracted these things with this deep throat singing that he does. Um, because, I mean, it's not my thing, but it is very beautiful to listen to. He's very talented. Um, but once again, it's Throat King, or yeah, Throat, throat Sing King is his TikTok. Um, I just didn't want to put the sound because I didn't want to get hit with a copyright and get the video taken down because I want you guys to see this. Um, and if you know what throat singing is, it sounds like a didgeridoo. It's, it's very, very unique. It's very soothing and very interesting. So tonight's next video clip is one out of Brazil. And um, I've shared it once before on the channel. A guy asked to see it again. And I figured, hey, why not? I don't know if it's real or not. Um, part of me wants to say maybe. Part of me wants to say no. So, but I'm not going to say I think it's real. Because I don't know. And uh, I'll let you guys decide. Here you go.
man, it does have that certain real quality to it, but I wasn't there. I don't know. I'm not going to say I feel like it's 100% real. Um, do I think it's creepy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it resembles what I saw. I know that. Um, I know for a fact that what I saw resembles nothing that I've ever seen in any kind of video or a movie or whatever. It had a snout and it was very, very strange looking. It looked like it did not belong on this planet. It looked like it was very capable. Well, I know it was capable of moving fast through the woods because it got there before we did in a vehicle and the woods are full of underbrush and it was obviously very strong, but it was not like looking like Thor or a bodybuilder. Um, it, it really looked like something that it looked like a monster what I saw to be honest with you it was much more scarier than any kind of underworld werewolf dog man that are on the movies this thing was by far the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my entire life and I was in a vehicle moving away from it um, very cool video clip though. Well, there you have it, folks, this bonus upload. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is after all your support that keeps the channel growing and going. And honestly, what gives people a chance and a place to share their experiences and theories, judgment free, just simply treat it with the respect that we all deserve. Thank you. Stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there, and they are definitely dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions. Never stop searching for the truth. And God bless.